Good morning, a very warm welcome to this online traditional service from wherever you're watching. It's great that you're joining us. We begin as ever in prayer. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we in all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue in prayer. Lord God, we have sinned against you, we have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let everything be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. Sing psalms, hymns and sacred songs. Let us sing to God with thankful hearts. Open our lips, Lord, and we shall praise your name. The readings today are two verses from Psalm 27, Psalm 27 verses 4 and 5. One thing I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, 
and to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter. In the day of trouble, he will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. And Exodus 33 verses 15 and 16. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favour in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. Good morning everyone. Paul Harcourt is the New Wine National Director and Vicar of a Church in London and we watched a video of his just a few weeks ago and he said this, God didn't bring this virus but what if God is using it? History tells us that whenever there is plague, famine or persecution the church shines. What if instead of being shaken we're being shaped? What if we the church don't emerge from lockdown timidly and weary but we break out, prayed up, fired up with a message of hope and healing, equipped and ready to share this with the nation. What if Satan thought he was bringing the church to our knees only to discover that we become more powerful than ever before? This is our time. Let's not miss it. And uh, we continue to emerge from lockdown. And so I think these are powerful prophetic words for the time we're in. Uh, I just wanted to unpack them a little bit this morning. So firstly, what is the message of hope we have? And secondly, what can we, the church, practically do to be equipped or shaped, to use Paul Harcourt's words, to emerge from this season stronger in our faith, more powerful than ever before, ready to share this with others? And I'm going to spend much more on this second point. So firstly, what is this message of hope that we have? 1 Peter 3, 15, um, really familiar to many of us, says this. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. In other words, we need to be able to explain why we are a Christian. You know, hope isn't a, a, a wish for something, a kind of shot in the dark. Biblical hope is based on something much more tangible. It's based on the nature and character of our God, who is a good father. My uh, Christian hope is in a person who I encountered, whose power revealed the love of God and it changed everything for me. Meeting Jesus changed pain due to my childhood. It changed cycles of depression. It changed self-diminishing patterns of thought. You know, and there'll be many of us, uh, we've got our own story, many of us will be able to say that that encounter changed addictions, that it changed financial situations, that it changed mental uh, well-being issues, that it completely changed their outlook on life. This is the hope that we have to give to others. And each one of us will have our own personal story of what happened when we encountered Jesus. So that's the first thing. Secondly, what can we practically do to be equipped or shaped to emerge from this season stronger in our faith and more powerful than ever before? And of course, uh, there'll be lots of things that we can do. But I just want to suggest three things that I think are priority, and I've called it the three Ps. So the first is, uh, if we want to see the church emerge powerfully, then we need to pray and seek the Father's heart. So this is the first one, pray. Uh, I recently heard Chris Vallotton, who is one of the Bethel leaders, tell a story of uh, when he moved into this really uh, tiny little place, it was before he was a paid minister, and he, he moved intentionally to set up a church there. And he just felt that he should spend some time praying. So every Sunday evening, he walked around this place and prayed, and he did it for a year. And he says, you know, frankly, it was a bit boring and nothing exciting happened. And then one evening, a number of others approached him and said, actually, we'd like to come out with you and, and pray with you. And Chris kind of says, you know, I, I did confess to them, guys, it's not exciting. It's a bit boring. And they said, uh, we, we, we want to come out and pray with you. And so he says 24 others uh, joined him on this uh, one evening and they were praying outside. 
And as they were praying, uh, there was kind of, there was this noise, almost like a, a screaming sound. There was nobody there. And they didn't really understand what was going on. They only knew that they needed to pray. And as they prayed, this voice got louder. And Chris said, you know, we just decided we were just going to pray even louder. So each time they prayed and this voice got louder, they prayed louder still. And eventually the voice stopped all of a sudden. And Chris said he realised that he for a year and the 24 others on that night, actually what they were doing is they were engaging in a battle in the spiritual realm, which needed to be done before anything else could happen in that place. As things in the spiritual realm were tied up, dealt with as he and others prayed, then it made a way for the Holy Spirit to come and to do some great things uh, in that place. And Chris has got loads of testimonies of that time, of what um, the Lord did after that year of praying. So that's the first thing we can do to equip ourselves. The first P, pray. The second P is partake. You know, I think it's really helpful if we can take regular opportunities to feed ourselves, uh, to feed our, our spiritual inner being. Yeah, I love a good Netflix box uh, set binge as much as anyone else. But I think maybe this is also a good time to binge on spiritual things. Even if you feel life is really busy for you right now, and I know it is for some, I am constantly challenged to make my relationship with God the priority. You might say, well, you're a vicar, it's easy for you. I have to tell you, it's really not. It's not true. I have to exercise as much discipline now as I did when I was a full-time social worker or a full-time mummy based at home. So nurture yourself, read scripture, listen to sermons, books, podcasts. When you're reading your Bible, maybe buy a commentary so you can study alongside. Listen to sermons from uh, trusted Christians. So pray and secondly, partake. And lastly, and I think this is the most important thing, the final P is presence. That reading that we heard earlier in Exodus, Exodus 33, it says this, if your presence, that's God's presence, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? It's a great question, isn't it? What distinguishes the church from everyone else? It's simply this, God's presence. You know, there is no substitute for simply just being with the Lord. I, I, I find it so easy just to uh, perhaps listen to a sermon or read a book about faith or talk to someone else about faith. But I've been challenged again and again during this season that the Lord just requires us to be in his presence, heart to heart. And I found that uh, we all have our own ways of doing this. But for me, I found one of the easiest ways of doing this is, is to put on some worship music and just worship or to sit in silence with no agenda. I guarantee you, no matter what your day holds, you will be more equipped to face it when you've spent time with the Lord. Things just change when we're in his presence because that's where the power is. You know, I've heard countless stories of people being healed, just for example, not because they've asked for it, but because they've been in his presence, often just worshipping. Uh, some of you may remember Diane Robinson's story of being healed as she wor worshipped during a service on a Sunday. And in seeking his presence, well then I guess it's not so surprising that as she encountered him, she encountered his power as well. The power of God can't be separated from the presence of God. You know, if you're standing next to a fire, you'll know because you'll become warm. If you jump in a pool, you know you'll become wet. And in the same way, if you come close to the Lord, you will experience his power too. Yeah, in, a, in a few weeks, uh, we're going to be uh, looking forward to our holiday club this year. This year it's online, Brave Dave. And King David, he witnessed and was part of the most incredible miracles. But when we read the songs that he wrote that recorded in Psalms, and one of which was read for us this morning, what we discover is that what David was, was actually pursuing his entire life, and yes, he got it wrong from time to time, but what he was pursuing his entire life was not military strength. It wasn't supernatural power for its own sake. It was God's presence. 
So three things that we can do to equip ourselves to emerge from this time powerfully, prayed up, ready. Pray, partake and presence. You know what? If we, the church, don't emerge from lockdown timidly and weary, but we break out, prayed up, fired up with our own personal message of hope because of the difference encountering Jesus has made to us. So we are equipped and ready to share this with our nation, starting with wherever we are. What if Satan thought he was bringing the church to our knees only to discover that we become more powerful than ever before as we pray for God's kingdom to come, partake in building up our own spiritual well-being and crucially, thirdly, spent time in his presence. Because what distinguishes us from everyone else on the face of the earth is that we are a people of God's presence. It's never been about what we can do. It's about who we are with. We say the creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. So let us pray. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son Jesus Christ to hear us when we pray in faith. Strengthen Donald and John, our bishops, and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Bless and guide Elizabeth our Queen. Give wisdom to all in authority, and direct this in every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. And give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, and have a few moments to name those you know to the Lord. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Hear us as remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. So as we move into sharing communion together, uh, I'd like us first to pray. Uh, many of us have been praying for a little girl called Nola throughout this time, and uh, she's been very poorly. Uh, but this week we heard that she's able to go home. So I just want to give God thanks for that progress. So we thank you, Lord, that this little girl is able to go home this week. and. 
So we're conscious, Father, that uh, she still needs uh, an awful lot of healing. So we continue to pray for that. We pray for complete healing for this little girl. And that's for your peace to be around her family, particularly her mum, Lisa. I'm also aware, I've heard this week, uh, a number of us um, have had um, falls. So Brian Hilliard's in hospital, or he was in hospital rather, and he's broken his wrist. So we pray for you, Brian. Just pray healing um, for you and uh, peace for you and Jill. And also, also uh, Edith is in hospital. She's fractured her hip. So uh, again, Father, we pray for Edith. We thank you for her. We thank you for yes. her faith. And I just ask that you'd be with her, that you'd bring her peace and comfort and hope. Amen. So let's lead uh, into communion. Dawn's just been speaking about the need to be in the presence of God. And of course, communion is such a, uh, a good thing for us that we can use communion to come into the presence of God. It, it says at the end of Luke's Gospel, and in that very well-known passage, uh, on the road to Emmaus, that the disciples recognised Jesus when he broke the bread. And of course, much of communion is a mystery, but uh, the Holy Spirit does something, and we can draw close uh, to him at communion. It says in Ephesians, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. So remind yourself that the blood of Jesus has set you free that your debt has been paid once and for all, that we are justified, made right through his blood. Thank him for your forgiveness. Thank him that you have peace with him. And Ephesians goes on to say, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So through the blood of Jesus, we're able to draw close to God. You can boldly enter the Holy of Holies. So as we share communion together, as we take the bread and we drink the wine or the juice, acknowledge his presence with you. I'm going to use 1 Corinthians as our liturgy this morning it says this for I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body that is for you do this in remembrance of me so why don't uh, you uh, take some bread In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, 
now yeah, and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but so much for joining us this morning and we're going to finish with the final blessing the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and with you always Amen <laughs>